Hello, hello, Facebook. How are you? So, good afternoon and welcome to Tuesday Talks. Um, so, a few things first. If this is your first time watching me, then do me a favor and drop a one below in the comments. Um, and if you catch this on the replay, then drop a man or a woman walking or running, sorry, running. Um, I wanted to go over a few things today and just kind of talk about different things that you could do in the mornings to kind of help make your day a little bit more productive. And so this morning I actually did this video and there was no sound. So I had like 15, almost 16 minutes and there was no sound whatsoever. And so I'm testing and learning this new app for my Facebook lives. And I guess it's just part of the process. So, so today I wanted to talk about some really important things. Um, one, you know, what are the three best things that you can do for yourself every single day? Uh, dopamine and serotonin, what it is, kind of how to release it the right way, avoiding the Facebook depression, um, decision making and how to balance that out and how to get into your white space. Um, so some of the most important things that you can do every day are, you know, like I'm going to just quickly, I'll give you, you know, my, what I do every morning to um, help me kind of prepare, right? So I get up and I try to meditate for at least 20 minutes. Um, and then I typically do some yoga this morning. I finally did a <laughs> headstand with my yoga wheel. That was pretty exciting. I have not been able to do that. This is the first time that I have been able to accomplish that. And so that actually helped me just to throw off dopamine right away, was, which is, was great. But anyway, and then after you're done with that, so I would like to sit down and I try to write down three of the, you know, things that I need to focus on throughout the day. And it's a win-win by writing these out because that's how you can get your dopamine fix. Um, I don't touch my phone for at least the first, to, I, I like to try to go for an hour. Typically it doesn't really get me to an hour, but I like to try to make it to one hour before um, I touch my phone in the morning. And the reason is because what is happening is people are getting on there and they're seeing, oh, my, my, you know, my post from last night was liked or my live video from last night, you know, somebody liked that, um, it, you know, just different things. And that's releasing dopamine. And what's happening is you're training your brain to release the, um, the dopamine and that feel good feeling the pleasure, you know, dopamine is like kind of like your pleasure center, right? So it releases and stimulates people um, to seek out activities that in turn releases that dopamine. And so instead of reaching for a goal that maybe you set, you know, you're getting dopamine released immediately because you just saw a bunch of people liked your Facebook video or a bunch of people liked your Instagram post or, you know, people retweeted your tweet, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, so, uh, I try not to touch my phone in the mornings. Um, because what you can do is you, if you write out your list every morning or even the night before and you work towards achieving that, you can kind of retrain your brain to get away from the technology part of releasing dopamine to actually releasing the dopamine because you accomplished something that you actually needed to do, if that makes a whole lot of sense. So a couple of different ways actually um, to help increase your dopamine and serotonin levels are is stop seeking perfection. Nothing is perfect. You know, like this morning I just did this video and it was 17 minutes of me talking, but there was no sound. Um, and I didn't even realize actually until after I went back to try to watch it again. <laughs> Um, be independent of yourself. Okay, this be you. Be Embrace that, that inner weirdo or that inner, you know, tech geek or that inner um, designer, whatever it may be. Just be you and be who you are. And it will, it will help you with so many things um, that can actually kind of just get out there, you know. Um, hey, Deborah, how are you? good to see you on um so and then turn off your brain okay hint that's talking about the white space and i'll get to that in just a second um don't problem solve decide and i'm also going to talk about that in a minute too because there is a thing called decision fatigue which is actually um 
being more heavily studied and it, it's a real thing. I, I notice it with myself. So, um, and then, you know, admit to your mistakes, admit when you're wrong, admit when you, you know, you take critiquing from your peers and actually let that invest in yourself because that will actually help, um, you improve on things, right? It's like personal development. So, um, one thing I wanted to share with everybody first is this quote by Robert Downey Jr. He talks about not chasing people. Be yourself, do your own thing, work hard, and the right people are going to come to you and they're going to stay there. They're going to stay in your life. They're going to stay in your circle. And those are the people that you need. Okay. I don't know if a lot of you talk, you know, believe in um, people come into your life for reasons. Well, they do. And it, it's amazing, you know, how many different things can come out of just being you and, and not worrying about trying to be somebody else, which that will touch on Facebook depression. Um, you know, so anyway, uh, we'll jump into um, a couple of things. Sorry, I'm a little off track because I'm still trying to figure out how I can use this video recording tool that I've got. Um, Deborah, it's great. I'm glad you're doing well. How's Mason doing? Um, so, okay, so let's talk a little bit about Facebook depression and what is it, right? So Facebook depression is basically because you're comparing yourself to somebody else. You're comparing yourself to your peers on Facebook. You're comparing yourself to your friends on Facebook. If you are, um, friends with your coworkers and, Let's say that they're getting, you know, promoted and they're getting raises and they're getting this. You're comparing yourself to them and how come I'm not getting it? How come I'm not reaching the top level in my company? How come I'm not, um, you know, moving as long as fast as she is or as fast as he is? Well, when you compare yourself to other people, what happens? You know, this is, an, is naturally in life anyway. It's just become more abundant because... A Facebook because of technology. I mean, it's not even have to be Facebook. It could be Instagram or Twitter or, um, you know, any, any social media network that you use. So stop, um, stop comparing yourself to others. Don't do that. Don't fall into that Facebook depression, social media depression, whatever you want to call it, you know, live life on your terms and stop allowing other people to take your power away. Um, you're really giving up your power when you are sitting there and you're being envious of other people and you're you know you have le less life satisfaction when you don't feel like you um uh can be everything that you want to be right so stop doing that it doesn't matter if you go faster or slower if you're the the rabbit or the tur tortoise just be who you are you know um, which we'll also talk, you know, let's talk a little bit about decision fatigue and how, you know, there's actually, if you Google, how many decisions do you make in a day? An average adult makes 35,000 decisions every single day. Can you believe that? 35,000. That's a huge number, right? Well, so there's a lot of studies actually are going on right now and they're talking about, you know, what is decision fatigue? Why is it easier to make bigger decisions in the mornings than it is in the evenings? Okay, so basically decision fatigue refers to the deteriorating quality of decision made by an individual after a long session of decision making. It is now understood as one of the causes of irrational trade-offs in decision making, right? So you got a spike through the day. And if you've ever worked in corporate America and you've ever watched your manager or your bosses or, you know, the, the top leaders in the company, a lot of the time they will delegate some decisions that can be made by other people within the company so that they don't have to do it. And there's reasons for that. Um, one thing you can do, like this is kind of minimal and you might think I'm a little crazy, but set your clothes out um, every night for the next day. Uh, my son does that every night. Um, I usually typically know what I'm going to wear the next day so that I don't have to get up in the morning and I don't have to worry about it. Um, one thing I, you know, I do is also, I, I try to control the last hour and the first hour of my day. And when I do that, I, at night, the night before, I'll try to write down, you know, three things that I need to focus on for the next day. 
you know, what are some of the bigger things that I have to complete and accomplish in order to have made my day feel successful or productive? And um, that's one way you can do it. Laying your clothes out is one way you can do it. If you have little decisions that need to be made and, and you need to make those decisions, write a pros and cons list, you know? Yeah, old, the old school pros and cons. It's amazing. It works great. So utilize that. Um, and then I wanted to jump into white space. And what is white space? White space is the empty space that you can open up your mind, right? It's going for a walk. It's getting away from technology. It's shutting down, shutting out. That is where you can basically kind of give your brain a break so that you can come back in refreshed and recharged. That's why a lot of people you'll notice who go to the gym maybe during the day or in the middle of the day at their lunch hour, um, they can kind of perform just as well after that lunch break that they did in the morning because they're refreshed and they're rejuvenated and they took a break from everything and they allowed their brain to absorb all of the information that it has already processed from, you know, eight to noon, right? In that four hour span, you really do process a lot and you have a lot of decisions that you usually have to make then as well. So um, the three things I do every morning and night, I do meditate every day. Um, I don't always get a full 20 minutes in. Sometimes it's only five minutes and that's okay. You know, I kind of try to tailor it to my day and, and how I'm feeling, um, how much time I've had, how exhausted I am by the end of the day. Um, I try to do my yoga every day and I go for a walk every day and write down the three business goals. I usually try to take 15 minutes the night before um, to kind of make a map for my next day and what I have to accomplish. And I usually um, also watch a video every day of some kind of inspiration, something to be inspired by. And I'm going to play a little bit of the video that inspired me to talk about this today. And it, it actually, it kind of, it, it gets you, you know, he talks about losing your power to technology and touching your phone when you first wake up and the dopamine and the white space, you know, he, this is. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and share this with you so that you guys can take a look for yourself. So hold on. I find that the people who are most effective, you know, and both effective and efficient are people who could see through the noise and really get to the, the signal, be able to separate yourself outside of, of, the, of the, the metaphor of the matrix so that you could have clarity. Of, of, of purpose, you know, and, and, and I think one of the things that's really powerful also is just a lot of people, they give, they give away their sovereignty and their power first thing in the morning. Like the first thing in the morning, they'll just, they'll pick up their phone and they'll check everything, you know, because there's the way it's set up, right? They're getting their, their dopamine fixes and, and it's, it's, it's just really rewiring their brain. So it's training them just to be distracted all the time. Can I stop you for a second? Sure. That was so rad. You give up your sovereignty <laughs> and your power. That's, that's incredible, dude. What's your morning routine look like? How does one avoid falling into the trap of reaching right for the cell phone and, and yeah. letting the world dictate? I mean, I think, okay, so one of the, I like the I like really managing my first hour of the day and the last hour of the day because it just that that's where I could control. Like sometimes when I go to the office, things are going to hit you and such like that. But here, when you when you wake up, instead of reaching for your phone, right? Because first of all, I always keep it. I don't keep the phone actually. So that was just a little bit of that video. Um, I'll put the link to the video down below so that you guys can go watch it if you'd like to. Um, but let me end this with another one of my favorite quotes. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. Now this can be in every aspect of your life. If you think you can do something, you're gonna be able to do it. You know, find where there's a will, where there's a way. Um, just take into account, you know, there are things that you can do to help progress along the way. And if there's ever anything that you need, then absolutely reach out. I would love to give you some advice and help you out in there. So again, thank you for watching my Tuesday Talks. Um, if you've joined us live, do me a favor and drop that one below in the comments. If you catch this in the replay, drop a man or a woman running below in the comments. 
Um, if this is your first time watching me, then let me know. Um, let me know what your thought. I love feedback, what I can improve on, and um, all that great stuff. So, again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and we'll chat later. Bye.